Hello and good morning. Good morning, Arrow. Yes, sir. Hi, this is Paul Council calling. Man, dude, I've waited a lifetime to talk to you guys. My God. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I got to start it off with saying thank you so much for your contribution to sharing your art with the world, sir, because you did teach the world to sing. Well, thank you. Thank you. And then to have a new collection of music, Rhythm of the World, you know I had to dive into this right away. Cool, yeah. It's, it's, we're so excited about it being out, and we're actually we're really excited about the album. You know, we wrote these eleven songs, and um, and we decided, well, gosh, we've written them. We better record them just for <laughs> prosperity's sake. And man, it started sounding really good to us, and we kept thinking, gosh, this is awesome. And uh, we pursued, and we got a executive producer, Rock Positano, who heard it and said, guys, this is really good. And we just were recording it because we wrote it. <laughs> well, see, I, th I thought that's what art was. If you feel it, let release it. It doesn't really belong to you. Right. I, I agree with you. <laughs> well, especially when you've got a song like Linda Hand. I mean, you talk about, I would love to be in that audience when everybody is singing louder than you guys on stage because they're, they're going to know these words. They're going to react to it. And we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna inspire them to sing with us. We love it when we're out there. People, if they know the words, they can sing along. Uh, we're very happy about that. The more the voices, the merrier. I say. So how how have you been able to keep it so simple? Because I mean, that's the one thing that a lot of writers don't get into is the fact that they they've got to you know draw pictures that really don't exist. But you guys, you're simple. You allow us to envision it and interpret it. Well, you know, because we just look at the times, you know, back in the 60s, the same situation in the world was happening. Mm -hmm. um, there was civil unrest. There was there was a, a, a conflict in Vietnam that was going on and people were coming back. And it was it, it seemed to us the same same situation. Unfortunately, so many years later, we're still in the same spot. So we thought we should write songs that reflect our time. And and the and and the reflection is the same as the reflection in the '60s. Mm. So, lend a hand is all about: can you literally love your your brother? Mm -hmm. Can you do this? We've all been on the tops and we've all been on the bottoms, you know. And some people they get in that bottom area and they struggle to get out. You know, maybe they lost their job, but before that they were doing great. So that guy on the corner in lend a hand could be you, Gary, or me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. And we would hope somebody would lend a hand. Well, you, you do write about the everyday world, and this is what I've been waiting for. And I, I talked about it during the lockdown with so many artists and stuff like that. I said, that when we come out of the end of this, there's going to be songs about the realms of reality. And, and even with Katrina, I, I went back in there over and over again because I, I kept saying, oh, my God, K -K 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 Katrina, th this right yeah. yeah, I mean, this is amazing the way that you have worked this in there, and, and you're not going to let anybody forget about it. Well, Arrow, you know, the thing is, is that my brother Barry passed away in Katrina, and we were all, we were all looking at me, Bob and Susan, anyway, we're going, well, who's going to write this song, man? Who's going to write the Katrina song? Because it was daunting, honestly, and, uh, but my brother Bob, he penned it, and he put it together, and he took, he, he went deep dived it, and boy, you know, he told me, he goes, Paul, I'm, I'm thinking about writing this Katrina song. And all of a sudden, he felt Barry's presence. Oh. I, I know this sounds funny, Errol, but he felt Barry's presence and that Barry was telling him what happened. And Bob was writing down what Barry was telling him. Uh, so and this I is like now. And, uh, and then and Katrina came from it. You know, and it was a hard song for all of us to do uh, because our rhythm section, Russ Broussard and Mary Lesang, they're from New Orleans. Oh. My sister lives there. Russ is her husband. And so they experienced it physically. And so that's kind of why Katrina feels it's a physical song. Mm -hmm. It's the storm is coming. The storm is raging. The storm is here. And uh, and Mary, our bass player, and Russ, our drummer, you can hear it there. They uh, they created a, a storm that they obviously knew something about. Well, you can hear it in the orchestration. I mean, all the way through that song, you, you, you're drawn into that, and all of a sudden the pictures yeah. inside your imagination come to life. Yep, yep. It's, uh, it's a good one. It's, it, we love it. So was this, the, the stuttering of K -K Katrina, was that part of the, uh, the original part, or was that something where you go, you know, let, let's put something in there that's going to become the hook of the song? Yeah, I think it really did happen like that. You know, um, 
the, the wrong was go Katrina, you know. Mm -hmm. And so when we were in the studio, it was happening like this the whole time, Arl, where we'd go, hey, let's go try this. And we'd run out there and we'd do this and come back in and listen to it because, you know, these, these songs had just been written and they were new to us. <laughs> and so we didn't have them for, you know, everybody's freshman album. They, they have it for five or six years. And so they know every song. They, they get everything. And this was coming out of us rapidly. And we'd go in, we'd go, hey, this sounds okay, right? You think this is good? And we're going, well, it sounds good to us. So <laughs> we should keep going forward. And then we decided to go, K -K 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 Katrina. Yeah. And, uh, and we went and listened. We went, oh, dude, that's it. That's the hook. <laughs> <laughs> when you have a song like oh, Rhythm yeah. of the World, someone, someone there is a, is a journal, a journal writer, or they're, or they're doing something because this, this song is all about being aware of the elements around us. Well, we have some messages in this album, you know. I mean, we are 60 kids, and e even when we used to write before, there was always a little message. And, you know, this album is, is not short of messages. Mm -hmm. We do have Rhythm of the World, and we have Nuclear Winter. Yes. Rhythm of the World was Susan just is that person. Susan's always looking looking for the skies to open up, you know, and the sun to shine through. And, and she, we're all concerned that if we don't look at it that way, we might not have it, you know. And so that's rhythm of the world. And, and we can either do rhythm of the world and have a great planet and everything will be groovy, or we can have nuclear winter, <laughs> which nobody wants. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I see those headlines. I, that, and, you know, i got to tell you, that song really did open up my heart in, in the way of going, okay, you know what, at least people are talking about this, and it's not the headlines we're shoving away or we don't want to go to that particular website. But you, you're talking about it, and that, that's so important. Mm -hmm. We felt the need to talk about it. Yeah. You know, this song was written. Uh, Nuclear Winter was written back in the '80s when there was no no worries, mm -hmm. and now here we are. You know, so many decades later, and this is what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so we felt uh, we felt we needed to put that out there, and we felt the councils could say it. You know, because everybody always goes, "Oh, these are the goody good, you know, the family band," but we're very concerned about it all, and uh, we were happy to have Nuclear Winter. Just to, you know, try to get everybody rethinking this out. Come on, guys. Right. How has recording changed in the way of doing the sessions and then and all of a sudden now you have to go in and master the sessions? I mean, that's two completely different projects. It is. And so what happened to us is that we got we got this album physically recorded right before COVID hit. Oh. So all during COVID we did two things. Our we we mixed Rhythm of the World, the whole album online with Frank Filippetti, who was in New York, and it was tedious, but we did it, and so we took advantage of that time to mix it, and the other thing we did was we started a podcast, yeah. because, <laughs> yeah, I know, Rock Positano, our executive producer, he goes, guys, you got to get a podcast. Yep. Oh, me and Bob thought he was meaning a blog <laughs> or, or something like that, you know? We didn't have any idea what he meant, but anyway, we started doing it. And now we have like 63 episodes up. Me, Bob, and Susan, we have to get together once a week, which is so much fun because yeah. we love each other and we like being together. And so the podcast is, is a joy for us to do. And over the 63 episodes, we've had every classic rock. We've had Pat Boone and no. Debbie Boone on, Bill Medley, Peter Noon. We had Richie Fury. We've had them all. And so they're all YouTubed and, um, you know, we, we Zoom them all just so we can see each other me bob and susan so we don't talk over each other <laughs> and uh and the podcast is, is wonderful council's podcast uh and so yeah all these big uh, uh felix cavalier i could go on and on they're all up there you can just go to council podcast and you can see all the episodes and listen in they're a hoot well see and the thing about you guys doing the podcast you because you have lived it you can talk about things that listeners didn't read in a rolling stone magazine or or some other magazine that you guys can have that that experience of togetherness through relationship yes and the and the other thing that happens is that when we have these classic rock legends on they're very comfortable with yes. us you know so people people can get flippant in fact every now and then you know in fact sometimes we'll do a whole episode and we'll get a call from the the guest and they'll go hey you know I think uh, at like minute 407, uh, I, I, I'd like that taken out, what I said, you know, so they get, they're very comfortable with us, you know, and it becomes a great interview. 
I, I've been with Pat Boone a couple of times, and our, our connection is the Billy Graham Library. And, and boy, we get talking about the Billy Graham Library, and that Pat Boone, he just takes off. He's such a wonderful heart. Arrow, how cool is that guy at his age, <laughs> <Right>. man? I, <laughs> I'm telling you, we were he blew our minds. He was actually steering Debbie. You know, Debbie comes on to help him through an interview. Well, he was helping Debbie through the interview. <laughs> <laughs> he was amazing. When, when you have a song like Every Little Secret, I'll get, i i got to tell you what I felt inside my heart. I wanted to be outside next to a campfire with, with you guys playing in the background. I mean, that song really does take us someplace. It's a great tune. It's a great song. Every little secret is every little secret, <laughs> and uh, and it, it is a great song. And you know, all these songs were so fun to put vocals to. You know, vocals were missing, I think, in music for a while, and and we just felt like we wanted to bring them back. Mm-hmm. And so we really put some vocals on this album. Well, and I'm glad that you said that because you're right. Because, you know, people were sampling music and stuff like that, basically borrowing from other creative minds. And it's like, okay, I've already heard this song before. It's just got different lyrics. I'm going to tune out. And But now you've given us something here that we're tuning into. Yes. Yes. You know, it's... Uh... I think people like harmonies. They they don't know they they miss them until they hear them. That's right. And then they go, oh wow, I really miss harmonies like that. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Yeah. So where can listeners go to find out about the Cowsels? Because you know people are discovering music every single day. The internet is the new Tower Records. It is the new Tower Records. You can go to any of your sub- music suppliers and find Rhythm of the World. I'll tell you that much. But again, in Target and all these stores, it's it's going to be everywhere, and uh, and we hope people enjoy it. You know, it's a good listen, and every song is a bit different. It, you know, you don't like have five songs sounding like they wrote five <laughs> right. songs, <laughs> and uh, and yeah, and it's just I mean, I guess you know, there's no way not to harlequin back to the 60s with us, but we feel that, you know, it's relevant today. We think the music that we have on this album is very relevant to young people and to old people alike. Um, I think the young people are going to listen to some of these songs, and they're going to go, wow, I like what these people are saying. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. Please come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Thank you, Aro. I hope that I'm, I'm going to keep your number right here in front of me, and I'm going to give you a call when we're rolling up the charts. Let's do it. Let's do it, man. Well, you have a brilliant All day right. today. You be brilliant, okay? Okay. You have a great day. You bet. Bye, guy.